Hey everyone, welcome back to Reliable Prepper. I'm excited you're here today because we're diving into something that's critical this time of year, especially if you're someone who likes to be ready for anything, surviving the winter under tough conditions. Imagine being caught in a winter crisis where maybe the power's out, resources are limited, or you're forced to rely on what's immediately around you. So today we're going to go over an advanced winter survival guide that pulls in techniques from all sorts of sources. We're talking modern day survival strategies, some of the smartest and most resourceful methods used by the homeless community, tried and true techniques from the Amish, and even historical methods that people used long before electricity was a thing. By the end of this video, you're going to have a whole arsenal of tips and skills to pull from if you ever find yourself in a winter survival situation. We'll cover staying warm, food, water, shelter, clothing, health, and even some psychological survival tips to help you keep a positive outlook when things get tough. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and share this with anyone who needs to hear it. Trust me, they'll thank you later. So let's jump in. Winter is no joke. Even in the best conditions, you're dealing with extreme temperatures, shorter days, and limited sunlight, which means less time to get things done outside and more time huddling inside for warmth. In survival situations, things like hypothermia and frostbite aren't just possibilities. They're real, immediate threats. Now, it's one thing to know that it's going to be cold, but it's another thing entirely to understand how your body handles that cold and what you can do to protect yourself. First off, let's talk about hypothermia. Hypothermia happens when your body loses heat faster than it can produce it, which can happen in temperatures as mild as 50 degrees Fahrenheit if you're wet and exposed. One of the simplest yet most effective tricks comes from people living on the streets. They often use newspapers or cardboard to add insulation inside their clothing, which creates a barrier to trap body heat. And if you've ever wrapped yourself in a thick layer of blankets, you know how quickly that added insulation makes a difference. Now the Amish, who live in cold climates without a lot of modern amenities, rely heavily on wool because it's one of the best materials for retaining heat, even when it's damp they layer up and every layer adds more insulation and more warmth. Historically, people used animal skins. Think about the fur trappers or Native Americans who wore animal pelts to keep warm. Animal skins with the fur intact are incredibly effective because they insulate naturally, holding warmth close to your body. And tanning hides, if you're able to do it, provides an excellent way to make long-lasting, weather-resistant clothing or blankets that can really help you survive the cold. Winter also makes food preservation a critical skill because access to fresh food might be limited and hunting or foraging can be challenging when everything's frozen over or buried in snow. So, having preserved food is essential. The Amish have a unique technique called root cellaring, which is basically a method of storing root vegetables underground where the temperature remains steady and just above freezing. You can dig a pit or use an existing basement space where the cool, moist conditions help keep produce like potatoes, carrots, and turnips fresh for months. A simple setup could be a few barrels or crates with straw or sand to insulate the vegetables. Back in the day, people would smoke meat to preserve it. Smoking meat not only gives it that long shelf life, but also makes it easier to carry with you if you're on the move. Smoking doesn't require refrigeration and works well for meat like fish, pork, or beef. Another method is salt curing, which pulls moisture out of the meat and helps prevent bacteria from growing. Just remember that salting alone isn't a complete solution. It's usually combined with drying or smoking for the best results. If you can't find salt, you can even use ash as an emergency preservative, though it won't taste as good. Shelter is everything when it comes to surviving cold winters. Without a solid shelter to protect you from the wind, snow, and freezing temperatures, all the warm clothing in the world won't be enough. Now, building an insulated shelter might sound like a big project, but there are some simple tricks that can make a huge difference. If you've got access to a mylar blanket, you're already a step ahead. Mylar reflects body heat, so lining the walls or even just draping it over yourself in a shelter can bounce warmth back toward you instead of letting it escape into the cold. But let's say you don't have one of those. People on the streets will often use whatever they can find, cardboard, plastic sheets, tarps, to build makeshift shelters, sometimes layering these materials for extra insulation. Cardboard acts as a great insulator and can help keep the wind out while tarps keep moisture at bay. Now the Amish, who live in areas with harsh winters, 
have long used straw bales or mud bricks as natural insulation materials. You can build a small shelter with thick walls, and that insulation makes a big difference. Historically, people would build quinzies or snow houses. A quinzy is a structure where you pile up snow, let it settle, and then dig out a shelter inside it. It's pretty simple to make if you're in an area with a lot of snow. And snow itself is an insulator because it traps air, which helps keep heat in. Just be cautious when digging it out so you don't accidentally collapse the roof on yourself. For heating, the Amish rely on wood stoves and fireplaces, which are efficient when you know how to manage your firewood. They know that smaller, hotter fires use wood more effectively, and they keep the fire burning just enough to heat the space. Historically, people used something called a Dakota fire hole, which is essentially an underground fire pit that lets you burn wood with minimal smoke. This can be a good option if you want to conserve wood or avoid giving away your location with plumes of smoke. Let's not forget about water. It might seem like there's water everywhere in winter because of all the snow and ice, but safe drinking water can still be hard to come by, especially if it's too cold to melt ice or snow easily. Drinking snow directly is a bad idea because it can lower your body temperature, which is the last thing you need in freezing conditions. The Amish usually melt snow in barrels or pots and boil it to make it safe to drink. Boiling is always a good way to purify water, but if you're low on fuel, that might not be an option. People who live on the streets will sometimes filter water with makeshift materials or even let water sit and settle, allowing dirt to sink to the bottom. A quick trick is to use charcoal and sand to make a DIY filter. Back in history when boiling wasn't an option, people often used solar stills to purify water. While it's a slow process, you can make a solar still even in winter conditions by setting up a container, covering it with plastic and allowing the sun's rays to cause condensation. The condensed water then drips into a collection container. It's a slow but effective way to get purified water when other options aren't available. All right, let's get into clothing. It's essential to dress smartly in winter because the wrong clothing can leave you exposed to frostbite or hypothermia. The key here is layering. The Amish are big believers in wool and flannel for good reason. Wool retains warmth even when it's wet, which makes it ideal for winter wear. They layer up with wool coats, flannel shirts, and wool socks to trap as much heat as possible. Back in the old days, people used animal furs for clothing, especially from animals with dense, warm fur like wolves, foxes, or bears. These materials provide insulation in a way that modern synthetics can't quite replicate. If you're in a bind, take a tip from the homeless community. They often use plastic bags inside their shoes to help keep feet dry and to trap heat. Wet feet lead to cold feet, which can lead to frostbite. So any trick that keeps moisture out is worth it. Additionally, you can add insulation to your clothing by stuffing dry grass, leaves, or even paper between layers. The Amish are also big on quilting, and you'll find quilts aren't just for sleeping. They can be worn as wraps or even turned into ponchos if you're in a cold environment. Historically, people used down feathers for warmth, which is still one of the best natural insulators available. Let's talk about food because you'll need energy to keep warm. It's important to focus on high calorie, nutrient dense foods in winter because your body needs more fuel just to maintain its core temperature. The Amish often grow winter greens like kale or spinach in cold frames or hoop houses, which act like mini greenhouses and protect the plants from frost. They also can vegetables in the fall so they have a growable food source through the colder months. A cold frame is basically a box covered with glass or plastic that you place over plants to keep them warm even when it's freezing outside. It's simple but really effective if you're looking to keep some fresh greens around during winter. Cold frames can be built cheaply with materials like old windows or even plastic sheets, and they help keep plants like cabbage, kale, and root vegetables from freezing so they stay fresh for you when the days are short and chilly. Historically, people had to rely heavily on hunting and gathering in the winter. Since fresh produce wasn't available, they would often trap small game like rabbits or squirrels, which are plentiful even in colder months. Snares are simple traps that can be made with minimal materials, and they're a lifesaver if you know how to use them properly. Even a little protein can make a big difference when you're low on food sources, so learning to make simple traps can be a valuable skill. And then there's fermentation, which might sound fancy, but it's really simple and incredibly useful. In colder months, the Amish use fermentation for foods like sauerkraut, pickles, 
and even kimchi, which are loaded with probiotics and preserve well. Fermented foods don't just taste great, they're also packed with nutrients and help keep your immune system strong. Historically, people made something called pemmican, which was a mixture of dried meat, fat, and sometimes berries. Pemmican is high calorie, long lasting, and doesn't need refrigeration, making it one of the most efficient survival foods out there. It's dense, portable, and can last for months without going bad. If you're prepping for winter, it's definitely worth having some high energy preserved foods like pemmican or dried meats on hand. Health and hygiene are areas that get overlooked in winter survival, but they're just as important as food and shelter. Let's be honest, winter isn't the easiest time to keep clean, especially if you're in a survival situation where resources are limited. But staying clean can actually help prevent a lot of winter-related health issues, so it's worth the effort. One of the biggest challenges is keeping your feet dry, especially if you're constantly moving or working outside. The homeless often use newspaper or even plastic bags inside their shoes to help keep moisture out and provide a bit of insulation. Changing socks regularly, or at least drying them out whenever possible, can make a huge difference in your comfort level and prevent things like trench foot, which is no joke in cold, damp conditions. The Amish are big on natural remedies. They use herbal treatments to fend off colds and other ailments during the winter. For example, echinacea is known for boosting immunity and elderberry syrup is often used to fight colds and flu. These natural remedies have been around for centuries because they work. If you're planning to go off the grid or be without modern medicine, it might be worth learning a bit about herbal medicine and stocking up on some of these natural treatments. Historically, people used honey and vinegar as natural antiseptics, which are great for wound care if you don't have access to first aid supplies. And hygiene isn't just about staying clean. It's about preventing illness too. Washing your hands, face, and feet as often as possible is a simple step that goes a long way towards staying healthy. Even if you don't have access to soap, scrubbing with clean water and a cloth can remove a lot of bacteria. In harsh winter conditions, where medical help might be far away, staying on top of hygiene can prevent issues like infections, colds, and respiratory problems, all of which are harder to deal with in freezing temperatures. The dark days of winter mean you are going to need a reliable source of light. The Amish often use kerosene lamps or oil lamps to light their homes, and they make their own candles from beeswax or tallow, which is animal fat. If you've never made a candle before, it's surprisingly simple and something you can do even without specialized equipment. Tallow candles don't smell the best, but they burn for a long time. And if you're in a survival situation, that's what matters. In historical times, people would make something called rush lights. They dip dried reeds or grasses in animal fat, which would burn for a little while and give off light. It's not as effective as a full candle, but if resources are limited, it's better than nothing. And these are easy to make if you have some fat and something that can act as a wick. Lighting is not only about visibility, but also morale. Sitting in darkness can really wear you down mentally, so even a small candle can lift your spirits and make things feel a bit more normal. When it comes to communication, things get a bit trickier in a winter survival situation, especially if you're off the grid or if power lines are down. Historically, people use smoke signals or drums to communicate over distances, and while that may sound ancient, those methods can still work if you're trying to signal for help. Another trick is the three rule three fires in a triangle or three piles of rocks can signal distress, and it's something most rescue teams will recognize. If you're lucky enough to have a radio, make sure it's fully charged or have a wind-up radio on hand so you can stay updated on weather conditions or potential rescue information. Winter survival isn't just about staying physically warm and fed, it's also about keeping your mind in the right place. The cold, dark days can be tough on your mental health, and isolation or boredom can make things even harder. Keeping up morale is a crucial part of survival. And it's something we can learn a lot about from communities like the Amish and from history. The Amish have a strong sense of community, and they rely on each other for support. During the winter, they often gather for communal meals, barn raisings, or even just storytelling, which keeps everyone's spirits up and helps to foster a sense of belonging. When you feel connected to others, it's easier to handle the hardships of winter. So if you're in a situation where you have neighbors or family nearby, Consider organizing small get-togethers, or even just sharing a meal. It can make all the difference. 
Historically, people used storytelling, music, and games to keep each other entertained during the long winter months. These aren't just distractions. They're ways to stay engaged, keep your mind sharp, and keep morale high. A deck of cards, a musical instrument, or even just a book can be incredibly valuable when you're holed up for the winter. And if you're alone, journaling or creating art can be ways to express yourself and stave off loneliness. The key is to find something that keeps your mind busy and gives you a sense of purpose, even if it's small. Traveling in winter is a whole different game. Snow and ice make everything harder, and if you're trying to get from one place to another, it's easy to get disoriented or find yourself in dangerous conditions. The Amish are used to navigating in snow and often use horse-drawn sleds to get around when roads are impassable. If you're not Amish, you might not have a horse-drawn sled handy, but learning how to move safely in snow can still be incredibly helpful. Historically, people use snowshoes or skis to get around in deep snow. Snowshoes distribute your weight so you don't sink into the snow with each step, and they're easy to make if you have some basic materials and know-how. If you're moving long distances in snowy conditions, snowshoes or skis can save you a ton of energy and help you get where you need to go safely. Navigation is another big challenge in winter, especially if landmarks are covered by snow or if it's too cloudy to see the stars. Historically, people would rely on the North Star for direction or use prominent natural landmarks, like rivers or mountains, to guide their way. If you're in an area where you can't see many landmarks, consider using a compass or GPS device if you have one. Just remember that batteries drain faster in the cold, so if you're using electronics, keep them warm and bring spares if you can. Preparing for emergencies is the final piece of the puzzle. In winter, you have to think ahead because you can't just pop outside and find supplies if the weather is severe or if you're isolated. Having an emergency kit is essential, and it should include waterproof matches, heat reflective materials like mylar blankets, high calorie food bars, and ideally a manual wind up radio for getting updates if you're able to pick up any signals. A great tip to remember is that three of anything, a triangle of fires, three whistle blasts, or three rocks placed together, is a universal distress signal. This works if you're lost and need rescuers to find you. In winter, the sooner you can signal for help, the better, because exposure can quickly become life-threatening in extreme cold. All right, everyone, we've covered a lot here, from shelter and warmth to food, water, and even keeping your spirits high during a long winter. Winter survival isn't just about knowing a few tips and tricks. It's about being adaptable, resourceful, and resilient. Whether you're using modern techniques, homeless methods, Amish know-how, or ancient skills from history, there's a wealth of knowledge out there to keep you safe, warm, and prepared. So remember, stay adaptable, stay resourceful, and most importantly, keep a positive mindset, even when things look tough. If you found this video helpful and feel like you've gained some solid insights into winter survival, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay connected with Reliable Prepper. Give this video a thumbs up to let us know we're helping you on your journey to be prepared. And please share it with anyone who might find this information useful. You never know who might need these tips in a tough situation. And by sharing, you could help someone else be better equipped for winter's challenges. Just remember, winter survival is all about blending knowledge, being open to different approaches, and recognizing that you can always learn from others, even those with different life experiences.